All right. I think today is a nice day to review all of my propagations. And what you can see in front of me are all of my leaf propagations. And that's not even covering the, the head cuttings and the ones that I've tried from seeds. Every single tray that you can see on this table are all from my second batch of propagations. And I did my second batch around mid-September. So that's about a month and a half ago. I'm going to give you a better look at each tray so you can see how they have progressed. Now, as you can see, I have lots of trays here and it would take me a while to cover all of them. So maybe we'll just go through them quickly and just pause through some of the notable ones. In this tray, you will see that most of the sprouts here have already gr grown large enough and I might be able to move them into a separate pot soon. These ones have been laid around winter, I think, or towards the end of winter. This is why uh, these ones seem to be larger than the others. These are my Graptocidum Francesco Baldis, together with my Fred Ives. So the Francesco Baldis, all of them, have already grown some pups. As for the Fred Ives, this is a curious case because most of them started out with roots. Although, if you look closely, they're starting to grow some pups. So, better late than never. I've got more of the Francesco Baldi over here. And as you can see, all of them have already grown pups. So, really good results here. This tray is a mix of Golden Glow, Pulvinata Frosty, Graptocidum Bronze, and Pearl von Unberg. So as you can see, all of them, most of them have pups. Some of them, especially the pulvinatas, are drying out. So low yield there. Golden glows haven't sprouted yet, except for this one. But the bronze, the Graptocidum bronze, I have definitely good results with them. This next tray contains Sidum Adolfi and Graptoviria Rose Queen. They've all bar barely sprouted. They still have small pups, but otherwise, good yield here as well. This is another assorted tray, and to your right, you would see Sidum Adolfi. And to the left, I think these are Echeveria Pallida. And I think only this one has started growing. Or not, yeah, I don't think this is a sprout. But then again, I only pulled this about a few weeks ago, so I'm not really concerned. And then right here, we have some Pachypaitum compactum. All of them have roots, and some of them have grown small pup. So I'm still hoping it catches up. I can't remember what this, these leaves are. But it seems to be growing something, so I can't wait to see what it turns out to be. Same here, I can't remember where I pulled this from. I should have labeled them before. And now we're moving to the next table. These are leaves from my burro's tail. And as you can see, some of them have already sprouted, while most of them haven't yet. I've got about three of these, three bowls. And in the other bowls, this is a, if I remember correctly, this is a Sedeveria Harry Butterfield. Uh, commonly known, at least to some people here, uh, giant, giant donkey's tail. Because they look similar to donkey's tail, only much larger. And that name is well deserved. Because one of its parents is the donkey's tail. We are looking at more of the Echeverias now. To the right, this is from Echeveria Big Red and none of them have sprouted yet. In the middle would be the Graptoviria tricolor. And yes, all of them have pops now. And lastly, on the left side are all black prints. Look at all those pups. 
in this next tray these are all leaves from uh, Graptopetalum paraguayense subspecies paraguayense and as you can see they're all a mess right now this is mainly because of all the strong winds we've been having in the past few days so lots of them have dislodged they have great wind resistance due to the large leaves I think some of them have flown over into the other trays but I'll fix it up next time this next tray is another assortment so I've just been dumping random stuff here so I'm not really sure which one is which except that this fat ones over here this is a Pachyphytum glutinicole I'm not sure what the common name is this is not related to the moonstones because that one would be the oviferum and I don't I don't think I have an oviferum there are some pulvinata frosties here so at least I have some successful propagations because in the previous tray they haven't sprouted yet this is another assorted tray but thankfully I have labeled them so I know which ones they are so over on this side this is a Pearl von Nunberg, followed by an Echeveria Martin type of Agavoides then next would be Agavoides Lemaire a Sagita and these light ones here are Pachyveria flambeau and it looks like none of, none of them have sprouted yet this is uh, these are Golden Glow and finally Asadeviria Mayalan this is another assorted tray also with labels but unfortunately the wind blew some of them away but in any case let's see what's left here so at the far end we have Big Red followed by Douglas Huth and some Zoros on this side we have Ruby this is uh, Pulvinata Ruby lots of empty spaces here so I guess the leaves have either dried out or flown away and this big ones here these are Fred Ives and it, from this batch it looks like only the Fred Ives have rooted the rest haven't yet so that's interesting oh wait I got it wrong so this this ruby has rooted but only this one I do see one here with a pop so at least there's that and finally let's have a look at my trace of aeonium leaves on this side none of them have sprouted none of them have struck yet on the other side although there are mostly aeonium leaves here I've dumped some elegance leaves recently so don't mind those and from the looks of things there's one here that's starting to sprout one of the aeoniums so if you're looking to propagate aeoniums maybe doing by leaves it's not um, uh, it's not really efficient because you're better off just taking offsets or cutting them out they would grow fast during winter during the during the cooler months so in my case what I what I would do is to cut them out to chop them during autumn then plant them that way they have the whole of winter to grow and by the end of that by the end of winter and towards spring you would have more bushes more aeonium bushes and you can you'll have lots of offsets by then and don't forget I also have this uh, head cuttings so as you can see there's lots of them growing along the stem already and mostly towards the tip this is mainly because the tip is where the most young part of the stem is or the most vigorous part although of course there are exceptions like this one it has grown more towards the bottom so let's look at the others now same story here more most of them are growing on the tips it 
Same here. So yes, beheading works on most of them. Now these ones, these are my Raptosidum bronze. They are starting to etiolate because I was leaving them on the, on the shelf. It looks like it's a bad idea to do this during spring because they're actively growing now and they need more sunlight than ever. So yes, this is something I have to be mindful of. And it looks like I might need to do some chopping again soon. I'm not sure if you remember it, but back when I harvested the leaves, I decided to remove all of them rather than leave some at the base. I wanted to find out if removing the leaves meant that there would be only one growing point. Because my assumption is that if I remove the leaf cleanly, then the meristem would be left with the leaves. Like, for instance, if I pick up this one, I would assume that the meristem would be here at the node of the leaf. But I was also wondering if this, this part here would also grow a pop. So I think that seeing them growing here at the tip gives me a probable cause to believe that maybe it might work. I think I might have to do more experiments about this. So just to show that this was not a fluke. So here's the other chops that I made. As you can see, a lot of them are growing at the tip. And also as you can see, these are my Francesco Baldis. And all of them are growing pups near the tip of the cuts. And this is the tray containing all the leaves from the Francesco Baldis. Well, I do have another tray. Let me quickly show you. And here's the second tray. As you can see, all of the leaves have sprouted. So this tells me that both, both the leaves and the stem would grow pups it's a better idea to remove the leaves rather than leave them on the stem because you will potentially have twice the amount of plants that way. I just realized I have a third tray with the Francesco Baldi. In any case, I think this confirms it. It's better to separate the leaves, separate the leaves from the stem, so pluck them off as you potentially would get twice the amount of plants that way. Now what you see here are two batches of seeds that I've sowed. So these are all Echeverias. And this set here has been sowed around the beginning of October. And this one have been sowed around mid-October. So this one has already had about a month of growth. Well, this one has only barely had a couple of weeks. So let's get right to it. You're now looking at the tray containing the first batch of seeds. And from memory and from according to my labels, I've harvested the seeds and sown them on the 4th of October 2017. So that's just almost a month ago. I'm not sure if you can see it, but there's a tiny green thing over here. So that's actually an Echeveria sprout. So this is a slightly closer view of the same one. I'm not sure if the, the small pebbles around it are enough to give you a context of its size. So here's my little finger to help you out. See how tiny it is. I wonder if we can get even closer. Let me check. So this is even closer. 
and as you can see right now it has two leaves I can't remember what they call it but I think these are just the starter leaves and in a few weeks or maybe a month that's when the true leaves would start coming out let me let me check if I can show you the other one because I see another sprout so here it is it seems to be even smaller we try focusing on it yes so on this tray I only count six sprouts I have a low yield but it's better than nothing let me shift over to another cell I wonder if I can find it yes here so in this cell there are three sprouts which is good you might be able to barely see them there's three there's this one one in the middle one and to the left one there's three of them the one to the, to the right let me just shift it around a bit more so this one in the center of the view right now it's still shedding out the seed covering it's hard to see on video but I'm looking at it in person right now and I could see it I think maybe a different angle would help but let me check no it's still hard to see it hard to distinguish against the the sand in the background in any case it looks like there has been more sprouts now compared to the last time the last time I checked as of I think last week my count was only six and now it looks like there's nine or eight and this is from my first batch now let's go over to the second one and now you're looking at the second batch of seeds just go and cover them so I can get a better look all right so we're looking at one of the cells of the second batch of seeds and for the most part they haven't sprouted yet except for this particular cell so you could see probably three of them so one two and three and from the looks of things this is cell D D3 and based on my notes cell D3 is Princess Anne so it looks like Princess Anne went out first yes it looks healthy right now but I need to watch out for something that they call damping off it's when fungus attacks the tiny seedlings so yes in about a week I might need to reapply some antifungal solution on it and the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to prepare a mixture of water and I'm going to water it from the bottom again like I did before so that mix that I'm going to prepare would already contain some drops of concentrated antifungal solution I'm still not sure what the right concentration should be but uh, it's something I'm going to figure out over the next few days And here's my assistant watering my leaf propagations. <laughs> 